Hi, everybody. Before I start, I just wanted to ask you all if you could just do one thing for me. Could you just take a moment to remember when you were 16 or 17 and the person that you were most in love with? Um, you didn't have to know them. They didn't have to reciprocate. But just take a moment just to remember that name, and then I'll start. Um, OK, everybody, everybody back there. So I work for Viacom, um, a global media company. Um, and as Ben said, we have a whole bunch of different brands. But tonight, I'm largely going to focus on um, our story at MTV. MTV is a global brand. We're in 360 million households around the world in 160 countries and territories. MTV is over 30 years old. Um, and as such, we believe that every generation deserves to have its own MTV. But in order to achieve that, we really have to understand our audience deeply. Um, because if we do that, we can figure out how to create the best entertainment experiences for that audience. Um, and as you can imagine, in today's world of digital disruption, that's never been harder. So at Viacom, we invest heavily in research. This year alone, we spoke to 1.5 million people around the world um, in over 83 countries. What I'm going to do this evening is just talk to you a bit about some of that research and the trends that we're seeing and how we've applied them at MTV. But before I do that, I'd just like to show you a little bit about what MTV looks like today. This is it. Welcome to MTV Music Television. Starting right now. You'll never look at music the same way again. I'm shaking a little bit because I'm just like, this is so awesome. Have you got white dates to spot the face? We need chart on sex now. Right, listen up. I've got no time for soppy Geordies. Follow us on the socials. Do it right now with hashtag MT. Oh, you cunt. Aries? Swipe up now. Check out his eyes. So we've been really successful connecting with millennials, but now we need to connect with the next generation, Generation Z. This is the generation that were born between 1996 and 2011. They make up 26% of the global population, and the reason it's so important that all of us understand them is because by 2020, they'll make up 40% of global consumers. They're quite similar to the millennials, but at the same time, they're completely different because they're born into a completely different world, a world of technology that, which has given them a completely new way to communicate. They're also the most ethnically diverse generation of all time, so they celebrate diversity in all its forms, and they were born into an economic recession, so they have a completely different work ethic. So what does this mean for how we, as brands, connect with them? Well. First of all, we can't tell our story anymore. We have to tell theirs. We have to add value to, to their lives. I'm sure as marketeers, all of you are hearing, don't sell your brand, create content. Well, this has gone on that we see to a different level. It's about adding value into their lives. Unlike the millennials, this generation don't believe the world owes them a living. They're hardworking, they're entrepreneurial. 70% of them are self-employed and they want to be successful, so we can attract them as brands by helping them on their journey to success. At MTV, we've done a number of things in this space. Globally, we've launched MTV Breaks, where we invite audiences to come to our events, to work on our events, but we also host workshops and talks to inspire and educate our audience, to help them get a break into creative industries. 
There's nothing essentially new or fresh in this. You see Barclays doing this with their life skills. But I think it's important for all of us as brands to realize the importance of educating this audience and helping them to develop their skills. And we've also invited them to collaborate. This generation don't want brands to give it to them perfect. They want to make it perfect with you. They want to collaborate. They want to create their own version of things. As Ben said a few years ago, we relaunched MTV, and we went from being, I want my MTV, to I am my MTV. We opened up our, our whole brand identity and invited our audience to participate with us and co-create. As part of that, we launched Cover of the Month, which was an initiative where we invited our global audiences to cover a music track from one of our artists that we worked with. They then played all of their music tracks out on our global platforms. The music artists chose their favorite, and they had a chance of having their music video made by a top video director. Um, here's a short film of what we did. Every great artist started playing someone else's song. And knowing how much talent there is out there, we set out to find these future stars and showcase their talent in an even bigger way. Which is why we launched MTV Cover of the Month, a user-generated global music campaign. We partnered with today's top stars and invited our audience to cover one of their songs per month. Our website flooded with amazing covers from all over the world. One song, thousands of versions. I took a pill in Ibiza to show a I was cool. And when I finally got sober, felt 10 years older, but it was something to do. We took the best submissions and showcased them on our global platforms. The artists themselves helped us pick the covers they liked best and crowned them the cover of the month. What I love about his cover is that he made it his own. Every month we profile the story on a winner. It's always been my dream for everyone to hear my art. I just kept uploading videos and people started watching. Our video got over like 31 million claps. And heard from the artists too. I love hearing people cover my music. It feels so surreal to see people cover my songs. Then it was time to crown the cover of the year. The winner got their own music video, giving them opportunities to showcase their original track on the big stage. The cover of the month brought in over 1,200 versions of our favorite songs, broadcasted over 10,000 times around the world, over 32 million views, and over 160 million interactions. We generated loads of content and found some really surprising new artists. This reinforces our mission to give this generation's originality the big stage. So what we're seeing is that having your audience co-create with you is no longer an option for brands. It's an expectation. Um, there was a small show that people may have seen in the summer called Love Island. Um, as you know, it was like the biggest youth hit. And one of the reasons I think that that show was so successful was because ITV created an app where the audience could um, have an impact on the narrative of the show. They invited the fans to direct what was going to happen with the content. And because of that, what we're now seeing in all of our research is that our audience absolutely expect to be there. 69% of this generation believe that brands should be listening to them. Another trend that we're seeing is to help them live rich. This is a frugal generation. They were born into a financial recession, um, and so they want to spend wisely. At the same time, they value money, and they want to live in luxury. So they're looking to us as brands to help them do that, to give them discounts or give them something for free. In life, I generally find that I ask myself at tough times, what would Rihanna do? And it serves me well. In this instance, we have to ask ourselves, what did Rihanna do? And what Rihanna did was downloaded her new album for free so her audience could receive an album that they'd waited three years for absolutely for free. She partnered with Samsung to do it, but it really proves to us if Rihanna knows that it's no longer about her and it's about free discounts, then all of us need to get on board. The other thing we're seeing as well is that in this world of ubiquity, our audience can access anything with a swipe. And so what they're looking for is exclusivity and personalization. And as brands, we can really, really play a role in this space by offering our, our customers the opportunity to have something unique and customized. 
One of the things we're incredibly proud of at MTV is that we do incredible music events. Last week, we had the EMAs in Bilbao, and we have the very best talent and the very best production in the world. But today, that's no longer enough. Our audience expect to be able to personalize and customize that experience. And so we create AR and VR applications so that they can create overlays and make their own completely unique experience. On a completely other level, our latest biggest global hit is a show called Just the Two of Us. I don't know if any of you have come across it. Um, it's a show where friends and family give each other tattoos. The thing is, they don't know what the tattoo is until it's done. This is an enormous success. And the reason is that our audience are looking for moments to be more meaningful. They're looking to carve their own individual identities, even if it means having a tattoo like that on your chest for life. And so this really ties into this whole trend, which I'm sure many of you have heard about many times, that it's about experience over things. Because in 2012, what we saw was that people defined happiness in terms of time and money. But in 2017, the sources of happiness have shifted from the material to the experiential. Friends and family still top the list, but success and money has dropped in the rankings. People are defining success to be more about deep connections to others and less about superficial markers like driving a nice car. So any of us as brands who can help deliver on our audience's happiness goals will succeed. Something else that we're seeing, which is really interesting, is that Generation Z have trust issues. We did a survey of 5,200 young people in 32 countries, and we found that just 18% trust the police, 10% trust religious figures, and only 2% trust the government. They were born into a world of instability and extremes, raised in an environment of banking scandals, exposure of corporate greed, fake news, and they are deeply distrustful of big brands. And so one of the trends that we see coming through is a real trend for content and experiences that uncover the truth. Um, you see this on Netflix with Making the Murderer, people having a desire to understand the truth. And our biggest hit on MTV this summer, um, these were the winners of the show, was called True Love or True Lies, in which the audience had to figure out which couples were real or fake. And Nielsen reported that 92% of Gen Z trust their parents and friends more than brands. And this plays out in a whole bunch of different ways. But one interesting trend that we're seeing is the trend for nostalgia. People are looking for shared viewing experiences, and reboots and revivals enable parents to endorse a viewing experience and then share that with their children. But we're also seeing that nostalgia is a reaction to the uncertainty of our times, a return to a safer place. What's fascinating to me is that young people are nostalgic for a time they didn't even live through. We see Friends on Comedy Central being one of its most successful shows because Generation Z want to live in a time where there were no mobile phones and they could have a relationship with their friends in IRL. I also read that it was the Journal of Consumer Research said that when people um, are nostalgic, they spend more money. And this is really good news for us because MTV is really investing heavily in this space. We're doing a whole bunch of fashion partnerships with the likes of Fyodor Golem, Moschino at the moment in H&M, as well as Puma. Um, and in our content, we're rebooting some of our classic shows like Yo! MTV Raps, The Hills, Jersey Shore. This is a video from one of the brands I work across, which is Channel 5. And Blind Date, some of you may remember that show, we brought it back and we played in the nostalgia space to bring not only the old audience, to also bring a new audience. And it was really successful for us. Back in the day, before speed dating, naked dating, parking, swiping and skyping, before duck pout selfies, when you said it with flowers, not an aubergine emoji, back when being a thoughtless romantic was courageous, when love was expressed with an expertly crafted mixtape, before Tinder and Insta, Bumble Stitch and Bristler, before all that, there was charm, cheekiness, cheesy chat at lines and a lot, a lot of laughs. Back then, there was Blind Date. Um, another trend we're seeing, and I'm sure you are as well, that this new generation are more purpose-driven than any other. They want to change the world, and they believe they can. 
and they expect brands like us to stand for something and to champion the issues that matter to them. We see that two-thirds of this generation are expressing a, brand, an, expressing a preference for brands that have a point of view. And we're also seeing with Gen Z that their main passion is for human equality. 95% of this generation believe in inclusion and equality. They have an expectation that we live in a culture of openness and acceptance, and this is shaping the issues that they feel passionate about. Undoubtedly, the online world has had a massive impact on this, as people connect more and they become more curious and um, obtain new perspectives. They're creating a wider network, and this is creating a pervasive and strengthening sense of unity. But we have to be careful as brands, because we have to tread carefully in this space. When we think about Dove, who have done some of the most incredible work over the last 10 years, redefining what beauty means, when they created these bottles, which were in the shape of different bodies, they had an enormous backlash. And so it just reminds us all that as brands, we have to tread authentically and carefully in this space. One of the things we're seeing is that brands are expecting us to do more than just put our names to things. They're expecting us to truly give back, to donate money, and really, really play a role. And this also leads to something else that we've learned at MTV, and in fairness, learned the hard way, is the importance of doing things differently. It, we talked right at the beginning of today about the importance of standing out in, with content. And in a sea of ubiquity where there is so much content, you have to be true to your brand values in order to really cut through. At MTV, our brand values are to be bold and to be real and to be fun. And so, we often ha and so when we perform best, it's when we really deliver on this. It's not always what our executives want to see. But I'll show you a video of what we did um, to address the issue of plastics in the ocean at MTV Brazil. As a media brand, we must create Zeitgeist TV moments. We are seeing that this is the only way to bring in the Gen Z audience. You have to be the topic of conversation or you're not the topic of conversation. We are literally seeing today that you're either zero or hero and there doesn't seem to be anything in between. So, how do we create FOMO? There are a number of things that we're doing as a brand. It's about ensuring that we create content on every single social media platform that our audience are on. And as we know, they are on multiple social media platforms and increasingly moving to more private platforms. So we must connect with them. And not only that, we must create content that's bespoke for each platform, and that content must be thumb-stopping. And in addition to that, because this audience only trusts their friends and family, we must create digital tools that we give to their friends and family so they create the assets to market on our behalf. It's an incredibly challenging thing to do. When it comes to the content, um, we must make the audience feel something. At MTV, with any content, whether we're commissioning a show or making a marketing campaign, we always think to ourselves, which emoji face do we need to generate? 
Are we creating happiness, sadness, fear, shock, generally outrage? But we always have to create emotion. We're fortunate at MTV that we work in the space of music because music can be really effective in generating emotion. But we also see that humor is incredibly powerful as well. In fact, 73% of Generation Z said that when they see a piece of amusing content, they immediately forward it on to their friends. It's no surprise as well that at the moment, life is messy and complicated. They're not hiding from its imperfections. In fact, they often welcome addressing these issues head on, and comedy makes for the easiest delivery. I'm going to share with you an example from my colleagues um, at Comedy Central in the US, um, because it plays not only into the humor space, but also two other trends. It's incredibly topical, but it also reminds us again of the importance of immersive experiences. These are the words of the President of the United States. You'll be able to find them someday at a Trump presidential library. Twitter is clearly President Trump's preferred social media platform, and now all his tweets are being celebrated at the new Donald J. Trump presidential Twitter library. Hello, and welcome to The Daily Show presents the Donald J. Trump presidential Twitter library. Every president has had a presidential library in some capacity or form, but since this president doesn't really read, we thought that we would create and curate a magnum opus to his greatest work of art, his tweets. The library takes you through his first tweet all the way up to his last tweet. My favorite tweet was Kofefe. 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 Inside this vault are the tax returns of Donald J. Trump. Sad, 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 sad. Whenever he sends in a tweet, a red strobe light will go off. We've created an interactive 3D virtual tour. Now you can walk through the whole library on your computer or your phone. This is our moment of Zen. <laughs> so the good news. While this is a, ge a generation who are distrustful of big brands, 66% told us in our research that once they find a brand they like, they'll continue to buy into it for a long time, and this affinity strengthens with age. So as I wrap up, I just want to leave you with this thought. The digital world has transformed the way this generation um, communicates, making them pioneers of a new teenage experience. But there are many aspects of young life that are timeless and forever. 60% of teens admit to worrying about their appearance, 59% worry about being left out by their peers, and 31% of teens worry about never having a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Remember those feelings? Um, there's a great advertiser, Bill Birnbach, and he said, Human nature hasn't changed for a million years, and it won't change for another million years. It's fashionable to be con concerned with the changing man, but, com but true communicators must be concerned with the unchanging man. And so while it's incredibly important to understand this audience and to research them and spend time with them and look at the data and the analytics, at a certain point, just remembering what it was like to be 17 Remembering that person that you loved when you were that age, I think sometimes conserves just as well. Thank you.